All right, so Friday, me, Billy, Tommy, and Allison all headed down to Cincinnati to Edgewater Sports Park for the first Cincy Street Night event of 2024. Of course, one of the biggest classes is small tire, and then there's the streetcar class and some index classes mixed in as well. Not only was it the first Cincy Street Nights event for the year, it was also the first time I had an opportunity to pull my 50-foot enclosed with this Duramax dually that I bought from Uncle Bob. The truck made the tow down to Cincinnati and back a very pleasant experience, especially since it has dual tanks, so we never had to stop for fuel. Once we made it through the front gate, we picked out a pit spot and started unloading the cars. We brought Billy's 55 Chevy down and the Falcon to test. Billy's gonna put the 55 Chevy in 650 index and Tommy's gonna to run 530 index with the Falcon. Although there's open test and tune before eliminations, our late start down here tonight means that we're only gonna get one time shot with each one of the cars. Billy was up first in the 55. This will be the first time we've made a pass in this car with the new ATM four circuit dominator. Is it okay? Yeah, not bad, man. 10.13 at 1.32. So we're getting closer to that nine second pass. 10.13 at 132. If the sun goes down tonight, it might get that nine. What was the 60, 60 foot? 144, no prep, so that's pretty good. Did it spin? No, I didn't feel like it. Okay. Dead hooked. I mean, we could play around with a few things, but it felt pretty good going through the traps. Really? That's not bad. That's right out of the box. Yeah. I mean, that almost tied our personal best we were at Gainesville. On really? Trip. So I think we went 10 12 at Gainesville, but the mile an hour, you know, and, and the air was a lot better there, and we had a tailwind. And today we don't have that. So. Not bad, huh? Yeah, pretty uh, good. All right. Good, good, good. I think we can get a nine with that if the, you know, sun goes down. Of course, we won't be running quarter later, but we've got the exhaust we still need to do. It's definitely there. Very good. Although Billy's first pass in the 55 went really well. Tommy's first pass in the Falcon didn't go very well. The Falcon is suffering from an oil return line on the passenger turbo that runs uphill and the fact that the transmission was two quarts low on transmission fluid. The transmission was slipping so badly Tommy reached up to make sure it was in high gear. So our first and only test pass with the Falcon left us with more questions than answers about the new engine, turbo combination, and the new converter. The boys managed to get the car ready for first round, but Tommy's now flying blind with absolutely no idea what the car should run. Tommy let off and hit the brakes at about 400 feet, coasting to a 531 at only 110 miles an hour. Up next was the 55. It managed to go 643 at 106 miles an hour on its only test hit. So Billy knows he can easily cover the 650 index and use the brake pedal to get the win first round, going 651 at 92 miles an hour. So at this point, things are looking up. The 55's running good, and the Falcon's new engine, converter, and turbo combination was flying until we pulled into the staging lanes for round two. A fitting on the passenger side fuel rail had failed, causing a very dangerous fuel leak that had it caught fire, we would have lost likely the entire car. This is a terrible situation where we're trying to make repairs to a car in the staging lanes without the proper tools. To add insult to injury, Tommy was pulled for a competition buy when his opponent had broke previously. So even though Tommy's competitors broke, he still has to stage his car under its own power to be eligible to compete third round. But time is running out and they've already called Billy's class to the staging lanes for his next round. The kids worked feverishly on the car and I brought the 55 up to the staging lanes for them. But unfortunately, they couldn't get the Falcon fixed in time to make their round call. Obviously, a very, very disappointing situation. Well, we tried. We did everything we could, but the class is over. And in order to make the round, even though Tommy had a competition by, he has to take the beams. And the car, we can't even drive it up there to uh, put it in the beams. So unfortunately, Tommy's going to be out second round. Billy stayed to help Tommy work on the Falcon until the very last second, until he literally had to get in his car and head straight to the starting line for his second round of eliminations. Now this sport is tough enough as it is without this kind of mental anguish before you go up for the next round of eliminations. 
and ultimately I think that led to Billy losing second round when he got quick treat. Sometimes you have good days and sometimes you don't. That's just the way racing is. But one thing's for sure. Races can be won or lost in the shop. And after this weekend, it couldn't be any more clear. We need to do a better job out in the garage. So what's the plan? We are going to change all the O-rings that need changed and uh, just go over everything. We're gonna put Loctite on all the bolts for the rails that hold them to the intake. And uh, that way they don't never come loose again. We won't have to worry about it. We may need to replace this fitting. Definitely. This fitting and the loose fuel rails could have cost us the entire car and possibly Tommy's life. I consider it a blessing that we found this in the staging lanes and not at the other end of the track with the car on fire. So this brings us to Easter Sunday and after being so stressed out the night before, I was planning on a nice relaxing day at home. But that all went out the window when my phone started to blow up with text messages and FaceTimes from Thomas. So there I was on Easter morning, considering how many Easter eggs I would stuff in my face and just relax and unwind on this nice, peaceful day. And then I get a phone call. Technically, it was a FaceTime from Thomas. There seems to be a problem. Allison's family has a tradition of going to church on Easter Sunday and visiting her grandparents and retrieving Jeff's race car trailer, which is stored over the winter in their barn. Usually the trailer is left empty, but this year, Jeff decided to store their zero-turn mower in Tiffany's Jeep in the trailer. And the added weight in the trailer, along with the heavy rains yesterday, has left Jeff -a -fa -fa in a very slippery situation. The truck and trailer has slid off the driveway, and now the trailer is in danger of falling off the edge of the culvert and into the creek. Dumb ways to die. In an attempt to free himself from this Easter nightmare, and attempted to use it to pull the truck and trailer, up out of the mud. But Tiffany's hot rod turbo four-cylinder Jeep just wasn't up to the task. I figured you were gonna be mad when you saw him using your Jeep in the mud, trying to pull his trailer out. I might have to turn just, up the boost controller. Up that hill. I just don't know what to say about this, trying to pull that out, but you know. It was worth a try, you know, before we got to call the old man. Look at that, look at the damage. So Tiffany plans to take an alternate route across the creek and invite me down to the Kovalik Easter party at the bottom of the hill. Spilled all the boost, Mom. <laughs> oh, boy. Speed and power. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Does this really go to second gear? She's not going to make it second gear. Man. Look at you go. Look at your little Jeep go. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. <laughs> Just back there watching. <laughs> oh my god. This is kind of like what happened to him. Oh my gosh. Why would you go in second gear? You what? should. Why would you go in second gear? You should probably just roll back down and get a better head start. Look, look, now it's muddy. Now I gotta put that in the trailer. It's gonna be so mad because the tires are so muddy. It's your Jeep. Oh, but yeah, he's gotta tow it back. I guess you're driving it home then. You get one job to do. One job. You know what? You guys are all fired. <laughs> you guys are all fired. I can't hear a word he's saying. Well, this isn't gonna make anybody happy. I just wanna go home, guys. So this is where I come in. I loaded up my Bobcat 331 excavator on the trailer behind Billy's dually and set out for parts unknown. As usual, Junior's truck barely had enough fuel to get to the fuel station. So I made a quick pit stop at the Flying J to top off Billy's truck and my excavator, which hasn't been on the road or on a trailer in years. Once I had everything fueled up, I punched in directions to the pin Tommy had dropped in my text messages. And that's when I realized the location he sent me is not far from where Addie lives. Hop in, kid. We're on a mission. Nope. What's our curfew, Mom? Whatever you want. Oh, matter. God. All right. We'll see. Whatever. We'll be home. I know it's Easter. Nothing. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> We're already done. Everybody's leaving. We're going okay. To <laughs> All right. Thank you. Since tensions are running high at the Kovalik Easter celebration, I picked up someone who can help me video this fiasco. What the heck are we doing? <laughs> I 
got a 911 distress call this morning from Tommy. Evidently, Tommy and Allison and Jeff and shop supervisor all went to Easter service with, I think, shop supervisor's family. And then after church service, they came back and Jeff decided he wanted to get his trailer out of the barn. And uh, let's just say he got mud in his Easter basket. <laughs> I figure this fiasco is well deserving of a second or maybe even a third camera position to document the rescue mission you're about to witness. Where are we anyway? I don't even know. Now I have seen and heard stories of the farm that Tiffany's parents own out near New Concord. Now let's just say this is a very rural and rustic area. And the only thing that's even remotely level out here is the water tower. Anything that you set on the ground out here is bound to roll away from you and into a puddle of mud, especially with the torrential downpours that we had yesterday. So it's no surprise to me that Jeffrey has found himself in a delicate situation and his truck, trailer, and Tiffany's Jeep all covered in mud. And if you've ever watched any of the Gen 2 garage videos, you probably already know that Jeff's not likely going to be in a good mood. I'm just hoping that the two hours he's waited for me to get here has eased the tension. We need your expertise really bad. Where? Things are going downhill really fast. The Jeep's muddy and it's supposed to go back in the trailer. So, you know, that's not a good day for Jeff. Jeff is not okay. Everything is not fine. Shop supervisor, how could you let this happen? She was not on site. <laughs> <laughs> Getting yelled at because you know I got my Jeep dirty. My Jeep dirty. She's in her element. When she comes home, she gives full of hillbilly. Is this trailer rated for that? Sure. It's like, how heavy is that machine? 6,500 pounds. The trailer's rated for seven. I reckon that's solid you know right on the edge right on the edge of glory. so now that i've arrived on scene it's time to take inventory of the situation and see what i'm up against i've ever heard jeff cussing my wife all one day is, is bad. jeff's cussing is he really jeffrey <laughs> this is where we made it on the hill climb um, yeah and then it started spinning yeah and then he rolled back five feet and tried again, spun. Rolled oh. back five feet, spun. And then the trailer started dragging him down. I'm not gonna lie, when you called and said you need to bring the excavator, I thought, ah, Tommy's overreacting. But Tommy most definitely wasn't overreacting. Now it's time for me to make contact with Jeff and break the ice. Jeffrey, that's one hell of an Easter basket you found. Great. An excavator. Ooh, that's my favorite shape. Thankfully, Jeffrey was in a better spot mentally than I anticipated. He's like, don't call your dad. <laughs> they got a Massey Ferguson in the in the shop over there that hasn't been started in probably 15 years. And like, we're going to get this tractor started. It won't okay. start. Okay. If it was started, I would have. I'm like, we need the. We would have seen Jeff on a tractor. We would have been Massey. They'll see me in a tractor a lot. Really? So what's in the oh, trailer now? A lawnmower? Just prepping tracks. Just a mower now. The Jeep was in it, too. So I've got to admit, Tommy was right. We definitely need the excavator. So me and Addie walk back up to the top of the hill to get the machine unstrapped and unloaded off the trailer and begin making our descent, armed with a 6,500 pound Bobcat 331 excavator and a tow strap that I had initially purchased in preparation for sick week. I would have never guessed I'd be using it to pull Jeffrey out of the mud on Easter Sunday. The first thing I wanted to do was get the machine in position to be able to pull the trailer sideways back away from the edge of the culvert. So Jeff used an axle strap through the spokes of the wheels on the passenger side and used a chain attached to the excavator bucket. I used downforce on the blade on the front of the excavator to dig into the soft ground and keep the excavator from sliding on the slippery surface. On the first pull, I was able to move the trailer about three feet to the right, but ultimately we decided to hook again and move the trailer over another three feet just to be safe and keep the trailer from possibly sliding when Jeff attempts to pull the trailer forward. Yeah, just start the truck up and start up the yep. hill and it'll yep. take the trailer that way. I think you'll be all right. Yeah, I, like I think you got this lick, Jeffrey. I really <laughs> That's what Tommy said four hours ago. <laughs> I said, well, you can't listen to Thomas. And <laughs> he doesn't want, he's got Easter plans. I'm like, trust me, this, you have just made his day. Like he wants hey. to get in that digger so bad. The least I could do. 
<laughs> Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Yeah, go ahead, Jeffrey. See? Look at that. Now don't stop. It's a little much drier now. Come on, Jeff, get it out of there. Come on, Jeff, just get over the helm. Unfortunately, the driveway up the hill hadn't quite dried out enough for the truck to be able to pull the trailer up, even though it's empty. So now we're going to have to rely on the power in the tracks of this little excavator to hook to the truck and pull both the truck and the trailer the rest of the way up the hill. Once we managed to get Jeffrey's brand new Dodge pickup truck safely to the top of the hill without damaging anything, we could take a sigh of relief. Oh my God, this, tra this trailer's tore up. <laughs> Three hours ago, he's like, I'm gonna spend $50 at the car wash. And then an hour ago, he's like, I'm gonna spend $100 at the car wash. Now the only thing left to do is load the excavator back on the trailer and get it back home. Unfortunately, the excavator's too heavy to use the ramps. Time to do some sketchy shit, dude up. You do. As a matter of fact, you still got it. Thankfully, by Monday, the weather had greatly improved, albeit for only a short amount of time. With all the heavy precipitation over the last several days, the grass is greening up and the bridge is washed out behind the shop for about the 10 millionth time. So I unloaded the excavator and went back and cleared the culverts out and then made my way to the shop to go check on Buckwheat, who is hopefully finishing up the air conditioning repairs on my Malibu today. He literally had to replace everything in the air conditioning system, including the top of the air conditioning box, which required a trip to the junkyard. Well, thanks to my illustrious brother and his need for air conditioning, brought me up here to Astro's. I think I found a victim. Hello, victim. I found one that's all original. No brakes. It's never been off since the factory installed it. As long as I be careful of taking it apart, I should have one to put this sucker back together. Horse shit my brother gets me into. And looky there. Just like it never even happened. Jeremy claims that the top of the evaporator box was broken when he took it apart. So he cleaned up this old one and repainted it, and he's working on putting that back together while Steve works on this new oil containment system. The other day, we went to change oil in something, and the oil can that we typically use in this shop evaporated into thin air and it reappeared in the other shop buried behind a bunch of shit. So, I went to Mark's and I ordered this. But you guys seem to think there might be a problem on the horizon. What would that be, Buckwheat? Somebody's gonna not flip that valve and plug air into it and it's gonna become a geyser, like Texas. Would that be you, Steve? Wouldn't be me, because I know how to use it. If it's not set up like this, and the valve is off, and you see somebody hooking air to it, just run. The other thing we need to work on this morning is getting the 55 unloaded out of the race car trailer and investigate a massive exhaust leak that the car developed at Edgewater on the driver's side. Once we got the car unloaded, we propped the hood up and started investigating, only to find some header bolts that had backed out and caused the header gasket to fail. So I ran into Jegs to pick up header bolts and gaskets. You gonna store your trailer out there where uh, Jeff keeps his trailer? Ain't no way. Despite being a Mopar guy, Craig's smarter than Jeff. Thanks, Unc. Oh, no problem, Bill. No problem at all. 
While I was in at Jigs, the guys back at the shop are pulling the exhaust system off the 55, and Billy has decided he wants to replace all of it, including the mufflers, which Terry had ordered and had set out for me at Will Call up at the warehouse in Delaware. I think Billy was just going to put bullet mufflers on it, so I picked up a pair of Borla 3.5 inch straight through polished stainless steel mufflers. By the time I got back to the shop, Jeremy was just about ready for me to take the Malibu out and test drive the air conditioning. One of the biggest reasons I insist on keeping the air conditioning on this car in top shape is because June Pup likes to go with me everywhere I go. Unfortunately, June Pup doesn't have the best manners around strangers. She tends to nip at people, especially if they come too close to me. So oftentimes June Pup has to stay in the car with the air conditioning on, and if the air conditioning doesn't work very well, obviously she won't be happy. Stick your hand in front of that. Let's just say Jeremy had some minor difficulties in getting the air conditioning to perform to my liking. But now we're one step closer to having the car back as good as it was or better before we went to Florida. Now I just need to go in and see Mark and find out whether or not he can get me a sending unit for the gas gauge that will hopefully last longer than the Aeromotive unit, which lasts approximately 30 days. Look here. Look at this. Look, look at that. You ran out of biscuits. I'm now you're giving biscuits. her oatmeal cream pies. We're gonna have to do the oatmeal cream pie, but I think she likes these better. Well, she probably does. I know I do. I'll take the other half, whatever she don't eat. <laughs> hey, listen, I need a sending unit for at Malibu. I think I might have found one. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll have it in the morning. No kidding. Yeah, oh yeah. What? Yeah, oh yeah. Now I don't know how you're going to adapt it, but uh, well, I, I, you leave that up to me. Okay. Hey, at least I got ice cold air conditioning now. Do you really? Yeah, June Pup's breath is freezing right outside of her what? nostrils. Really? Well, that's awesome. Because uh, I knew that was a rough situation there for a minute. It was. Yeah. Me and Bucko about come to terms over that deal. Oh, did you? Well, I wish I'd have seen that. Well, maybe I will. Um, so I see you drug some stuff back. Did, yeah. Is that so you're going to till up my tater tater patch? Huh? Yeah. Oh, God. There's a heater core out there Bucko refused to oh, use. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. It's, and then there's an AC uh, compressor and then a second AC uh, compressor. Jeez, I swear. I think I might have ruined an AC compressor flushing crap out of the system, to be honest oh, with you. One of those. But that's, that's, that's for you to take up with uh, Bucko, not yeah. me. <laughs> well, I'll do that. All right, guys. Welcome back. So we're out here in the shop for a little bit tonight. The Malibu is almost back to pre-Florida trip conditions. The air conditioning obviously blows ice freaking cold in that thing. I'm really happy with that. Props to Uncle Buckwheat for getting that sorted out finally. Started off a little rough, but who would have ever thought a car that had 23,000 original miles on it when we bought it, documented 23,000 original miles, had someone get into the air conditioning box and hack that deal all up. They had blue RTV and stuff squeezed out everywhere. And Jeremy claims the box was cracked a little bit underneath that stainless panel that the wipers sit on. Whatever, we got it fixed. Uh, I saw the other day on one of the restoration sites, I can buy the decals, put the, the factory decal back on the air conditioning box uh, and also on the AC compressor. So I think I'm gonna do that. I like little things like that, but back the way they came from the factory. That's just me, it's my thing. Um, obviously, uh, we're gonna have to take it into Lucor and get an alignment. I placed a call today into Lucor and talked to Rich, and he's gonna try and squeeze me in later this week. You know, obviously when you have to change a spindle out, not every spindle is gonna be machined exactly the same. And now the car pulls to the right just a little bit, and it never did that before. Um, frustrating, but it is what it is. I'll get it fixed. Uh, and then Mark, uh, like you heard, he's got a sending unit coming in for me, uh, tomorrow down at the auto parts store. And I'm going to try and put a standard sending unit in this thing and make it work with the air motive tank. Um, I really like the air motive tank. I like the air motive in tank pump. Uh, I like all that, but for some reason I cannot keep ascending unit in this car. They last about a month. And somebody said, well, maybe it's something to do with the E85. Well, you know, I've had E85 in Billy's S10. I've had it in uh, Tommy's S10. Uh, <laughs> I've had it in my Nova. Uh, 
the Nova doesn't have any problem. And the Nova's got a, a sending unit that I got from Mark. So I don't know. It's just one of them things that uh, we're going to have to struggle through evidently. In other news, Junior's got this little Mustang sitting over here. He's getting ready to put up on the uh, website as a giveaway. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. It's a 79 factory pace car. Now, if you look up a 79 factory pace car, I'm pretty sure there was less than 10,500 of these built. Now, not only was this the very first year for the Fox body Mustang, it was also the very first year that a Mustang would pace the Indy 500 since 1964 when the Mustang was originally released. Now, originally there were three uh, identical Fox body Mustangs that were built specifically by Roush to pace the Indy 500. All three of those cars were automatics. All three of them had T-tops. The T-tops were not a factory option until the early 80s. I think it was 81. But these three cars were sent out and had the tops cut and T-tops added to them. This car does not have T-tops, obviously. Although it has had a sunroof added to it. Now, according to my research here that I found online, there were 10,470 some of these cars built as replicas. And the vast majority, or it seems like the majority of them were the 2.3 liter four cylinder cars. There were 5,970 four cylinder cars as opposed to 4,508 of the 302 cars built. Of the 302 cars, 2,106 were automatics and 2,402 were four speeds. Now I did a little research here online and ran the VIN number and this car actually was built uh, in Dearborn, Michigan and it came from the factory with a 302 uh, V8 engine. Now that specific engine and transmission combination a factory V8 four speed 79 pace car Mustang, well, they're pretty rare. There were only 1,809 of these cars ever built the way this particular car came from the factory. So to put that in perspective, it's almost as rare or is as rare as my four speed 1978 Monte Carlo I've got sitting up in the front shop. So it's really a neat piece of Fox body Mustang history. If it was up to me, I would take that car straight to House of Pearls and have the car completely repainted and all new decals put on it. And I think the car is worthy of that, but Billy doesn't want to spend the time and the money to do it. He's gonna let the car go as is with the patina on it. So it is what it is, but whoever wins it, uh, oh my gosh, it is a, it's a really, really nice uh, piece of Mustang history. The car is powered by a 347 small block Ford with a single turbo. It is a dirt block. The engine was built to handle about a thousand horsepower. It's on pump gas. It's a Holley Terminator X uh, fuel injection system. It's just a really well-built, uh, really solid old 79 Mustang. So I'm sure somebody uh, will be thrilled to win that thing. Uh, I think Billy's gonna start this giveaway here pretty soon, mid-April, I think. So be watching for that on streetracingchannel.com. Also guys, Vicky's got some new tumblers that are getting ready to go up on the website. Uh, on my website, that would be theoldmansgarage.shop. And uh, she's gonna restock the most popular of the uh, design t-shirts from Constant Design. And the most popular one for some reason was the one with the Nova and the 55 Chevy on it. So if you're interested in maybe picking out a, one of these tumblers or a new t-shirt, theoldmansgarage.shop. And in the next video, be on the lookout because I think we're gonna do another one of those deals where we give away a chance for somebody to come out and spend a couple of days with us, tour the shop, maybe go for a ride in the cars and go visit all the places that uh, we visit on a regular basis here on my channel. You know, Mark's, you know, A1 Auto Parts and we go into Jegs and see Uncle Terry and go up to the body shop and see everybody house pearls the machine shop, go see Uncle Bob, see what we're working on and get to experience it firsthand and see behind the scenes of what it takes to make these videos. <laughs> it's it's a lot of work. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll, we'll just film uh, someone's reaction to what it takes to actually make these videos. Uh, I know I catch a lot of flack sometimes. Everybody says, well, Bill don't do anything. Everybody does all the work. 
but uh, I think it's almost three o'clock in the morning right now, and I'm still out here filming. Everybody else is in bed, but uh, there's a lot of work that goes into this filming and editing, and I can't even tell you. It, nobody cares, <laughs> but it's a lot of work. And uh, so be on the lookout. I think on the next video, we're gonna announce the next giveaway. We did this once before. We had some people come up. They actually lived in Dayton, not far from us. Uh, and they brought a 66 C10 pickup truck up here and went for a cruise with us. We had a really good time. It was an awesome, awesome thing. Uh, him and his wife came up and drove the Malibu a little bit. And uh, we had a great time. And I think we're going to try and do that again here pretty soon. So be looking for that in the next video, guys. Good night, everybody. Have a good one. Guys, we're gonna try something new here. There's a lot of clips that never make it in the videos. So I'm gonna put up a few randoms and let me know what you think. Do you like it? Let me know in the comments. We have called in backup, Operation Rescue, the Kavalix. The price the is being made fun of a lot. You know what, what was the sermon today at church? It was about peace, love, and joy, and how God puts <laughs> us through trials to make us stronger. Thanks for your help, kid. You're welcome. I appreciate you very much. You're welcome. I hope you had fun. I did. <laughs> Dad is always down for anything. She's my new videographer. Well, Grandma's day is made that we got something he likes. Mm -hmm. What are you up to, squirrely locks? Just a little bit of shipping. Oh. Well, man, let me take time. Thanks, buddy. That's all right. Hang on a second. Ta-da. Now what? I broke my toe. It hurt pretty bad. He can't bowl. Tanner can't bowl? No, no Tanner can't bowl. Tanner's Tanner. a hell of a bowl. Oh, Tanner. I thought you were talking some shit on Tanner. No. no. We went to the bowling alley and Tanner made it very clear that. Just so you know, he can throw an eight pound ball at 33 miles an hour. I've almost got it all put back the way it was. Really? Now it just needs an alignment. Oh. And a gas gauge. So what do y'all think? You like the outtakes? Let me know in the comments. It'd make my life a hell of a lot easier if you did.